there was a mandapam by the river in the direction Aditha Karikalan pointed. It is a hall made of stone work. Some philanthropist must have built it to shelter passers-by in the sun and rain. The hall had been exposed to the sun and rain for a long time and was showing signs of age. At the ends of the hall some carved figures were seen. Old Malayan did not know what they were. Did you see, Grandpa? said Aditha Karigalan. Child! You mean the hall? I don't see anything else in it. The hall is empty too, and no one is in it. Said. Look at the courage of that female pigeon. Going to fight with the king. Going to fight the terrible giant to save the lover's life. Grandpa! Do you think the king will have mercy? No regrets. No regrets. Never regret a day. It kills and eats so many pigeons. Sandala King. Here I am going to kill you. Aditha Karikalan picked up a pebble lying next to him and threw it. The pebble went towards the hall and fell on one end of the hall. Aditha Karikalan, giant. Wish you well. After saying that, he laughed out loud. The old man already had some doubts about his grandson's Siddha Swadian. It's even more so now. Grandfather. Why are you staring at me like this? Go near the hall and see, said Kari Kalan. That way, Malay Aman went a little closer to the hall and stared at the place where Karakalan's stone had fallen. A sculpture was found there. The sculpture realistically depicts a king holding a dove in his claws and another dove flying with the king. Malay Aman came back and said, Child! It is true that I am old. My eyesight is not as accurate as it used to be. Only after I went closer and looked closely did I realize that it is a good piece of sculpture. Said. Good sculpture work? Grandfather, the sculpture is wonderful. Mahendra Varmar, the sculptor emperor of the Mamala period, someone must have done this too. At first sight, it seemed to me like it was actually happening. Said Kari Gallen. Aditha. The miracle is not only in that stone. It is in your eyes, it is in your mind. So many pilgrims pass this way every day. Three-fourths of them will not even notice this sculptural wonder. And many will leave without seeing. Only a few like you will see a sculpture. They will be so surprised. I'm not surprised, Grandpa. I'm angry. I'm so angry that I want to tear down that statue right now. I don't even like to praise too much the creator of such a monstrous sculpture. Karikala. What is this strange? When did your diamond chest give so much light? It is the nature of a king to kill and eat a pigeon. If a sinharaja takes pity on a sheep, he is not a sinharaja, that too will become a sheep. Those who desire to sit on the throne and rule must kill enemies and conspirators. Become an emperor and an umbrella for the world. Those born in the shadows must end by killing their enemies. If a king does not kill a pigeon, can it be a king? Why are you so upset about this? said Malay Aman. Grandfather. Everything you say is right, but after seeing the female dove in such distress, shouldn't the king feel compassion? Shouldn't he have mercy on the woman and release the man? Sir. Tell yourself, when you are about to kill one of your enemies, if his girlfriend comes across and asks for the man's life? Then your will the heart not have compassion. Kari Kalan asked. If such a woman comes across I will kick her with my left leg and kill my enemy. Kari Kala. There is no doubt about it. Valuvar has said that enemies have weapons in their praying hands and weapons are hidden in their crying tears. Women's tears are more dangerous than men's tears. Because, women's tears have a lot of soothing power. He who lets his mind relax like that can't do anything great in this world and he's also a bad person for women. Grandpa. What is this? Why do you talk so little about women? Doesn't talking less about women belittle my mother? Many of the maids working in your palace will be happier than you. Prepare yourself for grief and pain. If you don't have children, your husband will marry other women. You should not be saddened by it. If people are born to you, you should raise them as heroic people. 
not even a single drop of tear should be shed when the news comes that they have died on the battlefield. If your husband is happy, you will be happy too. If your husband is sad, try to make him happy. If your father is sick, you should work for him. If your husband dies, get married. Even if you are crying in your chest, tears should not fall in your eyes only. This is the culture of women in Malay Amman dynasty. Thus I advised your mother. Amathiri your mother has been walking till today, she is conducting. Karikala. She has raised you and your brother to be unparalleled warriors. After your father's illness, she has been doing all the chores by his side day and night. My shoulders swell whenever I think of having your mother as my daughter, said Malay Aman. Grandfather. The pride that fills me whenever I think of my mother cannot be measured. But let me ask you one thing. Suppose one of my father's mortal enemies comes with a knife to kill him. What will my mother do then? Will she stand in front and cry out to him to save her husband? Mainly, that coming like that if the enemy is known to my mother. Child. Your mother will never ask an enemy for his life like that. A Malayan's daughter will never dishonor the clan she was born into and the clan she was born into. She will consider her husband's enemy as her own mortal enemy. She will not bow before the enemy, she will not shed tears, and if her husband dies, she will immediately fall on him and die. Or she will turn her mind to stone and live she will live only to take revenge on the enemy. Hearing this, Aditha Karikalan heaved a deep sigh and said, Grandpa, shall I go and come? He said, Do you have to go? What's more doubt about that, Grandpa? It's already halfway up. Yes, it's more than halfway there. At first I told you not to go, then I told you to go. After hearing the news about your brother, I decided it's better for you to go. I don't believe that Aromas Hivarman is dead. I don't believe it either. Your father's whereabouts were unknown for some time in his youth. Similarly, Aromas I also stayed away on some island. I hope he will come back someday. However, I know that the news has created turmoil throughout the Chola country. Your parents will also be deeply worried. At this time, it is necessary for you to comfort them from their side. It is better to go as a friend than to become an enemy of the slanderers. That is why I agreed to go with Sam Bavariyar's invitation. If he had not invited me on purpose, I would have come too. Grandfather. Are you so afraid of me? Do you think me so helpless? Carrie Kalin asked. No, brother. No. Do I not know what a valiant warrior you are? I would send you alone among ten thousand deadly armed foes. But I fear only to send you alone before a woman who can tear your mind with so many tears. I have not heard that Sam Bavariyar's daughter is so good at trickery, grandfather. She is a woman who is afraid of coming in front of men, Kanamaran has said. I will not do something in such haste without the consent of my parents. I also know very well that two girls born in your tribe are still unmarried. Aditha, I have no thought about it. There are two daughters of my beloved son who have come for marriage. But I have no intention of tying them to your neck. Many of the Chola princes are already jealous and enmity towards me. If this too is added, there is no need to ask instead. I will be satisfied in a way if you tie up the Sam Bavariyar's daughter. I too am getting old my body is weak. Sometimes my heart is also weak. Sometimes I think that I will never see my dear grandson again, that this will be the last time I see you. I can't help you any more. Knew you need some friends who can take care of you. So if you marry Sam Bavariyar's daughter I will be really happy. Grandfather. I cannot do it even for your pleasure. I am not going as a guest to Sam Bavariyar's house to desire his friendship nor to marry his daughter. You may be relieved of that. Then why are you going, child? Shouldn't you tell me the truth? Now and then a few words fell into my ears as your two friends were talking. They were saying that the great Palyavatarayan had been married for over sixty years, and that the Mahini devil had sent you a straw, and that was why you agreed to come to Kadampur. Is that true? 
Yes, Grandpa. It's true. Said Aditha Kari Gallan. Marry like him. But don't even look at Mahyamakanai, who is married to the great Palyavatarayan. Forgive me, Grandfather. I will not commit such a crime. I will not tarnish the Chola clan and the Malayan clan. So why are you going for her call? Baby. I am going to tell you the truth. I once did her a great harm. I am going to apologize to her for that, said Carrie Gallon. What's that word? You mean apologizing to a girl? You can't bear to hear it in my ears. Said Malay Aman. Aditha Kari Kalan was for a while looking down. Then, bracing himself, he told Patanar the old history. He narrated in detail how he went in search of Vera Pandayan and found his hiding place, how Nandini interrupted him and asked for life support, how he killed him in a rage without hearing it and since then his mind has been restlessly wandering. That memory torments me incessantly. Grandfather. My mind will be at peace only if I see her once and ask for forgiveness. She seems ready to forget all that has gone. She is also busy trying to see to it that there is no confusion in the kingdom. That is why she has called me. I will return to Kanchi very soon after finishing what I am going to do. Grandpa. When I come back, I will find my brother and go on a ship to bring him back, said Aditha Kari Gallan. Old Malay Aman heaved a sigh and said, Many things which were hitherto unexplained now become clear to me. Many things which till now were a mystery make sense. Surely no one can beat destiny. Said.